with the current state of windows and microsoft's extremely bad decisions many people are looking for alternative operating systems linux is brought up as a choice but a lot of people think it's complicated hard to use and only for nerds or coders people think you need to spend your entire time in the terminal in order to do something as simple as change your wallpaper or installing chrome so today i'm here to prove that isn't the case I'm going to install Linux and see how far I can get without using the terminal. The first thing I had to do was pick a Linux distribution. Because Linux can be customized however you want, there are a whole bunch of different distributions or distros to pick from, but the only real differences are the package manager and the pre-installed software. So I did some research and ended up on Linux Mint, as the general consensus is it's very polished and a good option for Windows users, which I assume most of you watching are. On Linux Mint's website, you get three options to choose from. Cinnamon, XFCE, and Mate. I went with Cinnamon because it's the desktop environment that Mint encourages you to use the most and was also created by them. The other desktop environments, Mate and XFCE, are recommended for people who have lower end hardware or want a more lightweight desktop. I downloaded the ISO and copied it over to my USB flash drive with Ventor installed. Then I turned off the PC and entered the boot menu. From there I could select the flash drive, boot into Ventor and select Linux Mint. I was brought to a menu with a few options but I selected Start Linux Mint. After a few minutes I reached the live environment of Linux Mint. For those who don't know, many Linux distros allow you to boot into a live environment where you can use the whole OS completely off the boot device, in this case a thumb drive. It's useful if you want to get a real feel of the OS and make sure all your hardware works before you install it to your drive. I clicked install Linux Mint and was greeted with the Mint installer. Now, a cool thing about Mint's installer is that it allows you to multi-boot OS's very easily during the setup, you get three options, install Linux Mint alongside them, which installs Linux Mint alongside any other operating systems you have on your drive, erase disk and install Linux Mint, which wipes the entire disk including the OS and installs Linux Mint, or something else, which opens a partition menu where you can manage your own partitions by yourself. I am a man who likes to have a separate home partition on my Linux setup. It's not important if you don't know what it does, but it basically allows me to keep my files easily if I want to reinstall a different distribution. So I picked the something else option and manually created and mounted the root and home partitions using Gparted and the installer's partition menu. After I was done, I continued with the setup like normal. It asked me for my country, a username and password and then it began the bulk of the installation. After the installation finished, it asked me to restart. So once I did, I was greeted with the Grub bootloader. Not only does it let me boot Linux Mint, but it also detects and allows me to boot the other operating systems I have installed on this PC, even on separate drives. But let's just boot into Mint. It asked me for my password. I entered it, waited a little bit, and I reached the desktop. It opens a welcome screen that shows you some things you can do, like installing software and getting updates. But what about drivers, you may ask? Well, drivers on Linux work a bit differently to how they do on Windows. For most hardware, you don't need to install drivers or get them through updates like you do on Windows. They're already baked into the Linux kernel, so you may have noticed your monitor works out of the box and so does your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The only way you might have problems is if you're trying to use some hardware that doesn't have drivers already in the kernel, like some Nvidia mm. graphics cards. A lot of chips into the Android market and Nvidia has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So Nvidia, <laughs> you. But in most cases, you can just get the proper drivers from the driver manager in Linux Mint. This machine is all AMD, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's install some software. 
first I'm gonna install OBS so that I can record my screen properly. I can do this by opening the software center and OBS is right there on the front page. Clicking on it brings up the store page and all I need to do is click install then click continue. Once it's done I can click launch and it opens. We now have OBS and I didn't even need to touch the terminal. I opened the text editor and made a list of tasks that I'd like to do on Mint. The first task was changing my wallpaper. I was able to do this by simply right clicking the desktop and clicking change desktop background. I was meant with a selection of Linux Mint themed wallpapers and other general wallpapers. This is the one I ended up picking. Next on the list was switching the system theme. Linux Mint comes with three base themes, Mint L, Mint X and Mint Y. Mint X is Linux Mint's old default theme from the 2000s. It kinda resembles older macOS. Mint Y is applied by default and is modern, flat and minimalistic. It looks great in both light and dark modes. Mint L is an older theme, although it doesn't feel quite as old as Mint X but not as modern and sleek as Mint Y. The color setting lets you change the system's accent color that applications and UI elements can use. The third task on the list was changing the display resolution. All I had to do was right click the desktop and select display settings. From there I could change the display resolution. Next on the list was organize desktop. No, I didn't have many icons on the desktop other than the to-do list. So I simply created a folder called subscribe and put the list in there. That counts as organizing, right? Number 5 was browse the web. Most Linux distros come pre-installed with Firefox, a popular web browser. And Linux Mint is no exception. I'm able to browse the web completely normally with Firefox on Mint. This is a cool channel and you should subscribe. The sixth item on the list was install software. Now I already installed OBS but I wanted to install something else so I picked Steam. I opened the software center, typed Steam and it was right there. I clicked install, it informed me about all the additional changes and how much storage it will take. Then I entered my password and it began downloading Steam. When it was done, I opened it and it started downloading updates. Then I logged into my account. All set for the next item on the list, playing a game. Now, I don't own that many Steam games, but I've had Team Fortress 2 in my library for quite some time and needed an excuse to play it. So I downloaded it and played a game. Since I'm new to TF2, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just tried shooting the other team and kept dying. But as you can see, we are running a game on Linux Mint, even though it's an 18 year old one. The next tasks on our list were create, move and delete folders. All I had to do was open the file manager, right click and do the tasks from the right click menus. I don't even know why I put this here, just spanning for time. The next task was play a video locally. I opened the folder where I saved these screen recordings and clicked on one of them. It opened in Mint's default video player, Celluloid and played fine. The final task was set default applications. For this, I found the setting in the main menu and was able to change which app opens what type of file. And that was me using Linux Mint without using the terminal at all. There is no need to be scared of Linux, especially when the average computer user can use it without any struggles. If you made it this far, that means you enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you liked it. Drop a dislike if you dislike it, leave a comment with your thoughts and suggestions and subscribe below to the channel.